Hello, I'm Reverend Jimmy Smith, thankful for this another wonderful opportunity here at KAZ Radio. I invite your attention to the book of 1 Samuel in chapter 17 as we look at three verses. The first verse is verse number 29, and the Bible says, And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And then want to look at verse 34, and the Bible says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. Verse 35, also, and I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his hand. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. And then the other verse is verse 45, and the Bible says, Then said David to the Philistine, Thou come to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. And very briefly, by the grace of God, want to speak on the theme, Conquering the Giants. We thank God for another year. Here we are, year 2011, the fourth Sunday already. Time is moving quickly. We know not what a year will bring. But we know that God is with us. We know that God is faithful. He loves us. We also understand in Job chapter 14, verse 1, the text says, Man that's born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. We find in St. John chapter 15, verse 33, Jesus said, In this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Also, we find the great passage in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 12, Paul, as he writes under the inspiration of God, he says, Those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Beloved, we know not what a year may bring. I submit to you that you and I, we will encounter some giants, giants of life, and they come in various forms, in different forms, and yet I believe, beloved, as we look at this particular passage, this wonderful true story, uh, an event of history. Uh, David, as a boy, he faced a man of war from his youth. His name was Goliath. Goliath was 9-6. And here we find David would come up against this giant, and we see some principles that we can glean from the scripture to help you and I, not just to face our giants, but to conquer them. Principle number one, we see there in verse 29. Verse 29, uh, David recognized that there is a purpose for the trial. He says here, as he is giving a rebuttal to his elder brother, Eliab, Eliab had said to him, what are you doing here, David? You just come to see a fight. Uh, in reality, David was on an errand that his earthly father had sent him to send food to the army. But when he got there, his heavenly father had another job for him to do. And he says to his brother there in verse 29, and David said, what have I now done? In essence, he's saying to his big brother, get off my back. What have I now done? And then he says, is there not a cause? Do I not have purpose? And is there not a purpose for me being here now at such a time as this? And this trial and tribulation is for a purpose. God's army, Israel, was at a standstill. They were fearful. They were afraid. And beloved, as children of God, it's okay to stand still sometimes until we get marching orders from the Lord, but we never want to be in a state of retreat. God wants us to go forward, stand still, and, re and receive the salvation of the Lord, and then go forward. But here we find Israel's army, the army of the Lord. God was fighting the battle. God is the conqueror, and yet God's army was in retreat. They were fearful. They were afraid. And here we have a boy, a lad. David, he comes and he says to his brother, is there not a cause? Does not God have purpose for me? It's a wonderful truth. Yes, he does. But not only does God have purpose and plan for me and for you and for your life, God even has a purpose for the trial that you and I face. We find in James chapter 1 and verse 2, the text tell us that trials have a way of maturing us. We're told to rejoice at such a time because God is at work. We find in the book of Romans in chapter 5, verse 3, we find that tribulations worketh patience, that there are times when God will permit the trial, permit the storm to build character within us, character that will not get built without the suffering, without the tears, without the difficulty, without the hard times. God does have a plan. 
He does have a purpose. He is at work. He knows where I'm at. He knows what I'm going through. He knows what the doctor has said. He knows what the employer has said. He understands my marital status. He understands my bank account. God knows exactly right where I am. And yet he allows the storm. He allows the wind to blow. And sometimes the wind blow just to bring me back to a place of righteousness, back to a place of repentance. Principle number one, how do I conquer the storm? I want you to understand that there's a purpose for it. In the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 3, the text says, Have you suffered so many things in vain? The question is, Lord, what is it that you're teaching me? What is it that you're molding in me? What is it that you want me to grasp? What is it that you want me to understand? Must I suffer in vain? Must I revisit this because I didn't learn the first time? What is it? And we see that there in the book of Samuel 1 Samuel verse 29, David, he says, there is a cause for this trial. There is a cause for this tribulation. It's an interesting study when we study why do Christians suffer. And we see, beloved, in the New Testament, some seven reasons why God allows suffering to enter the life of the believer. In 2 Corinthians and chapter 1, we see principle number one, God allows suffering to enter my life so that, number one, he may comfort me. God is the God of all comfort and the Father of great mercy. And then secondly, within that same passage, we see God allows suffering to enter my life so that I may comfort somebody else with the comfort that God has given to me. And the list goes on. My point is, God has a purpose for it. God has a plan. Point number two, understand preparation. Here, as we consider verse 34, David had came to the king seeking to convince King Saul that I'm the man for the job, I'm the boy for the job, I'm the vessel for the job. The trial is there, yes, we cannot deny it. Nine six Goliath was, and he had his armor, he had his club, he had his sword, he had his shield, he had his shin guard. That man was no joke. David could not deny the, the reality of him being there, nor could he deny the reality that Israel was in retreat. He says to the king, king, I know what I'm doing. Note again here in verse 34, and David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Verse 35, he talks about how he took him by the chin and knocked him out. In essence, he's saying here, I'm prepared for this. Beloved, as we conquer the giants, may we understand that I have to prepare for the giant even before the battle comes. I have to prepare. In essence, what I'm saying is put on the whole armor of God now. Study now. Pray now. Fast now. Attend church now. Stay in fellowship with God now. Serve now. Why? Because you're fortifying yourself. You're strengthening yourself. You're preparing yourself for what? For life, for the trials and tribulations of life. Why? Because they're going to come. As we think about the great athletes of old, we think about great men who have done great things in the uh, athletic world. They didn't show up and the first time of the game start playing the sport. Jesse Owens didn't start running when he uh, entered the Olympics. No, he had been running for a while. Muhammad Ali didn't just start boxing uh, the first day he got in the ring. No, he, he had been practicing. Uh, others, uh, Jim Brown, who they call the great Jim Brown, he didn't uh, reach such heights on the first day. No, he had to practice. Michael Jordan, his, his high school coach told him, give it up. You don't have the gift. You don't have the talent. And now he's recognized as the best who ever played the field, who ever played the game. Well, that didn't happen by accident. It happened. Why? Because of preparation. And beloved, we are in a warfare whether we want to be in it or not. We're in a warfare and we're in this warfare and the devil is relentless and he will kick us when we're down, but when we're down, we don't have to stay down. Somebody once said, when life knock you down, try to land on your back. For if you can look up, you can get up. You can conquer the giant, but I have to become strengthened now, fortified now. I need to be prayed up 
right now. I need to be in the Word now, and the Word need to be in me now. I need the fellowship of the saints now when the devil whispers in my ear that which is negative, that which is downward. God is there, and I'm reminded of his promises. The Spirit of God can bring the Word of God back to, to my remembrance just when I need it and encourage me and strengthen me and refresh me. And so David, he says here, listen, I understand there's a problem, but I want you to understand, King, I am prepared for this problem. I am the boy to get the job done. I am the youth who can get things rolling again. I am the person who can kill this giant. And then point number three, David, he was persuasive. He was persuaded and persuasive and positive. He had, in essence, he had faith in God that God was able to deliver. In, in verse 45, then said David to the Philistine, thou come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. He was persuasive. He was sure of the fact that God was able to conquer. He placed his faith in God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tells us without faith it's impossible to please God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 tells us therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God. Mark chapter 11 verse 22 tells us that have faith in God and the mountain is able to move. We're going to face some giants. We know not what a day brings. Trouble is nigh. Either we just got out of something, we're in something, or we're headed to something. Such is life. God is in the business of giving you and I the victory. We're not victims. We're victors. Three things we, I want to encourage you to remember. Remember there's a purpose and a plan for the trouble. Remember to prepare yourself today, now. Get started. The hour is already late. And remember to place your faith in God. God will see you through. He is a very present help during our time of need. My name is Reverend Jimmy Smith. I'm thankful for this wonderful opportunity. May the Lord bless you.